well over a year ago. I ran through some of the settings on the Senso Comfort for my Valent heat pump and I spoke about some of the settings that my installer had left wrong, how I'd corrected them and why they were better for running efficiency and also for comfort. But off the back of that, I got so many questions about the setting of the heat curve. And there's loads of great resources out there. You can go to HeatGeek and understand a lot more about a weather compensation curve and how Valent uh, programs their heat curves for their heat pumps. But I did a little under six minute video. It's been shared many times on the Facebook um, owners group and it's helped a lot of people really increase their efficiency. And it's really kind of heartwarming to see in the comments people who are really struggling with their efficiency. And that just unlocked the key just by reducing their heat curve from 1.2 to 0.6. In this video anyway, I want to get into why I recommended what I recommended. Because a lot of people question, they said, that's too much of a generalization and broad brush and you shouldn't be recommending that everyone just set their heat curve to 0.6 and then go from there. And so following that, I started with a little poll in the Valent um, Aerotherm Plus uh, heat pump group and I asked everyone, what is your heat curve set to? And w there were hundreds of respondents to this survey. And as you can see, 0.6 or 0.65 was the biggest group of people. And interestingly, a lot of the people who complained about my recommendation of 0.6, they said, your people are going to end up cold because then that's going to be too cold for their system. Yeah, okay, 20%, one fifth of people do need a heat curve above 0.6. But let's remember that by setting a weather compensation curve that is a little bit too low, the system will run efficiently. It won't probably have to cycle as hard, potentially, depending on the weather, the external weather. Um, also, the compressor will be able to modulate right down, uh, potentially. You could save a lot of energy. But of course, if these 20% of people are cold, they're not going to be happy. That's why I said it was just a starting point and gave them the advice that you might need to bump it up. And also the difference between 0.65 and 0.7 very tiny internal air temperature that could be the difference of one degree or maybe even less than one degree depending on the system and how you're running it but as you can see a lot of people well below 0.6 even by jumping to 0.6 their property may still be overheating they might only want 21 degrees but they're being delivered 23 degrees or 24 degrees and so they have to keep backing it down and keep backing it down to 0 0.5 0 0.4 0.3 .3 to get them in the right ballpark so i've uh just demonstrated this in a few other ways that may be easier for you to digest visually Here's uh, a little pie chart just showing it. This is nothing uh, particularly groundbreaking. I just wanted to share this survey information because I know there's a lot of my viewers that have valent heat pumps, um, but outside of the, they, they perhaps don't do Facebook and join that owners group there and perhaps they only watch the videos. So what do these numbers even mean? This is from the manual. This is what the valent heat curves look like, okay? So you can see, for example, the one that I've recommended, 0.6 here, at minus 20 degrees outside, you'd have a flow temperature of 50 degrees, okay? And that's basically what these corresponding lines mean here. So if we follow, if we track this 0.6 down and see when it intersects, you can see here at 40 degree flow temperature is when you get about minus three, okay? Now, I know in reality, a lot of the systems are designed for higher flow temperatures, but maybe the designers are erring on the side of caution and perhaps they are maybe more pessimistic about your heat loss, your air change uh, uh, figures. I, there could be lots of reasons why your system may be designed for a higher heat curve. But in reality, you run it on a lower heat curve. And that seems to be the findings and the experience of nearly every person in the Valent Aerotherm Plus heat pump owners group. OK, and um, there's also installers who report the same thing. They design the system for a bit higher, gives them headroom, etc., but it runs on a much lower curve. All of those people running on a 0 0.4 heat curve 
When it comes to minus 3 degrees, that means their flow temperature is around 35 degrees. Nice, low and slow flow temperature, especially for uh, properties that have underfloor heating. Um, you know, they're still going to be very comfortable, very warm. And as you can see, the default setting 1.2 is very confusing in the app. And it's very confusing. The Senso Comfort is left by default on that. And we know that this is really a boiler flow temperature because if we follow 1.2 down, and we intersect at about minus three degrees. What's our flow temperature there? 55 degrees. Okay, that is where a lot of installations were left. And I, I believe things are changing. Um, installers seem like in the last couple of years, they are so much more clued, it, clued up on things because... Um, I guess there's a lot more demand. They're installing a lot more. There's a lot more stuff online, a lot more good installers sharing their experience. And that all really helps. Now, I'm not saying a couple of years ago that there were no good installers. There was there were already loads. There were loads that knew so much. But very quickly, as an enthusiast, you could read through the manuals, you could digest this information, um, you could spend time studying this stuff. Whereas a lot of these heat pump installers, they had to be on the tools every day for their livelihood. And uh, perhaps they were find, uh, you know, struggling to find the place to upskill and to understand all these principles. I don't know, but I've chatted to a few installers in the last like six months or so Um both chatting and exchanging online, but also chatting with a few in person. They seem to really get their head around all this weather compensation stuff now, um, heat loss um, and designing temperature for good flow rate, uh, a system, designing a system for good flow rates and system capacity. All of these things that as I was chatting with heat pump installers two years ago, um, I don't want to say they were on the fringes, but for some of them they were. They were well, they were installing heat pumps, but they only really got to grasp with some of the basics, and um, they were quite often often deferring to, you know, valent technical support or other places. Anyway, I've waffled on for far too long. I hope this little information uh, justifies somewhat why I recommend just changing your system to a 0.6 heat curve if you find that your installer has left it on 1.2 or 1 or perhaps even 0.8 always try and adjust it down now i would not normally recommend that people who have it set down at 0.3 or 0.4 by an installer maybe you've got underfloor heating that's what the system's designed to i would never recommend that you up it to 0.6 i was only recommending to those people to lower it from those hefty heights of 1.2 to 0.6 and then see how it goes yes you're property may only reach 20 degrees or 19 degrees but it's very unlikely that you're going to freeze to death even if you do need to bump it back up to 0.7 thank you for watching i'm sure you're all subscribed you're not going to miss another video from this channel are you or you're going to let me know in the comments that i'm an absolute idiot and i've got no idea what i'm talking about that's always welcome as well it helps the algorithm you know engagement is always good good and bad positive negative i'm waffling on aren't i goodbye